to help you guys out, I want to give you a quick example of something that I started to put together uh, just to give you an illustration of what it is that I expect. Okay, so here is my example, PowerPoint, photo composition assignment. You don't actually have to include something like this, but to stress what I was saying earlier, these are not actual rules that if you follow, you'll get something really good. They're more like guidelines, which is why I call them guidelines, and which is why just because you are following them, you're not going to get a good picture. And on the flip side, if you don't follow them, you can still get a good picture, okay? But what I'm expecting you to do is for each guideline, give me an example of something bad and give me an example of something good. Okay, so this one here, knowing your focus was guideline number one, and I gave you a bad example and a good example, and I explained why they're bad and good. So the one on the left, the subject is supposed to be the microphone, but look at all that crap there. It looks horrible because there's just way too much stuff there, right? Camera, speakers, um, chargers, the pen, the dishes in the background, whatever. There's a lot of stuff there. And the example on the right, the reason it's a better example is twofold. One, I removed a lot of the clutter from the desk. And two, and this is something that I know you can't do. I just decided to do it to kind of, uh, I don't know, flex on you guys. Look how good I am. <laughs> I did a really bad job of editing it actually, but I edited it so that all, uh, I blurred out everything except for the microphone. And now the microphone is very clearly the focus because it's the only thing that's actually in focus. Now to make it better, the white dishes that are on the counter back there should have been removed because it's still pretty obvious even though I blurred the picture out. But the fact that it is that blurry kind of detracts from that. I would still like to remove them completely, but that's, you know, for another day. Okay, so example of bad, example of good, and then an explanation for why. Here's another one following the rule of thirds. And I think this is a really good example of showing that I'm following the rule of the thirds, not necessarily making a better image, okay? The picture on the left is not a very good example of the rule of thirds because Mr. G, who is the focus, is his head centered both vertically and horizontally in that image. So I'm not following the rule of thirds at all. And on the example of the good one, if you take if you do draw the lines of the rule of thirds in this image, his head is right where the cross of the horizontal line would meet the vertical line on the right top side of the picture, which is why it's a good example of following the rule of thirds. However, I'm only following the rule of thirds really in this picture, and the example of the good picture is not actually a very good photo at all. So this is the sort of thing I'm expecting you to do. You don't necessarily need to have a good picture. You just need to have a picture which shows the understanding of the rules well. Okay, or understanding of the one rule well at any rate. Okay, that's what I'm expecting from you guys. Have fun taking these photos. I want all the photos to be ones that you have taken yourself specifically for this project. And I want you to have a lot of time and be as absolutely creative as you can, okay? Because this is a really fun assignment to do. So have fun with it. I will give you today to work on it and tomorrow to work on it. I would do your best to get all your pictures done today and then throw your PowerPoint together and make it look pretty tomorrow. And it's going to be due probably Wednesday or Thursday of this week. But I'm fairly behind on marking right now. So we'll see, okay? That's all. Like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you guys around.